everyone. This is Robert Newstead, and I just returned from a business trip from the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and I wanted to give a little report on the findings while I was there. Uh, I've been an investor in the Minneapolis area for seven years now. Wow. So we've been investing in a number of products over there, uh, apartment complexes, triple net retail, uh, some mixed use office and service retail. Uh, also invested in some uh, low income housing in the area. And one of the things I noticed on this trip is that the Minneapolis and St. Paul markets continue to be very dynamic. Uh, they are now the 16th largest CSA uh, in the country, and they've got a, just over 4 million people in the combined area. Uh, so that's actually quite extensive. They, they also have extremely low unemployment. Uh, they've had very good job growth in the market, which has helped with the low unemployment. In fact, they have a lot of open requisitions there that haven't been able to be filled. And so while they've had good in-migration, uh, they have also been able to, uh, they also need more in migration to, to fill those jobs for the, the companies that are there. So uh, with the dynamic market, what I've noticed is that there is a lot of housing development that's been going on there. There's a lot of commercial development. There is a lot of multifamily that's being developed all throughout the Twin Cities. And a lot of it is taking place in and around where jobs are. Uh, but we're starting to see a lot more in the suburbs and the exurbs, which I think is a testament to what's happening. You're starting to see some out-migration from the downtowns in Minneapolis and St. Paul, uh, and they're moving out to the suburbs and the exurbs. One of the things I think that prompted that was uh, obviously the downtowns people are moving out, partly because they're still reeling a little bit. They've got a little bit of a black eye uh, after the death of George Floyd. Uh, and so you're still seeing that some of the areas on Lake Street and a couple areas in downtown still have uh, some boarded up shops. And you still see that there is a lot of uh, angst in the market uh, just related to those types of racial and social issues that shouldn't be happening in markets like this that are this dynamic anyway. Uh, and so hopefully that gets resolved over time and you start to see uh, those markets grow uh, and expand in, uh, in the downtown cores again. Um, but there is good job growth. There's low unemployment. Uh, there has been a lot of in-migration into the suburbs and exurbs. And so you're starting to see places that used to feel like an exurb are now feeling like an extension of the suburbs. And seven years ago, uh, when we started investing in the Northwest, it felt like a drive to get from downtown Minneapolis all the way out to the exurbs. And now uh, those markets have moved and it no longer feels like you're out in the boonies. It feels like it is the next extension and it's just an extension of the suburbs. Um, so that development's been interesting. The government still continues to invest in the infrastructure. And I, I use this because I compare it to California where I think California is doing a very poor job of investing in their roads, their streets, their safety. And you can see that the Twin Cities are investing in those areas. And so what you find is that the roads are drivable, the areas look safe, uh, and everything looks relatively new. And so this is a really interesting difference compared to some other markets uh, that may not be doing this same level of investment. One of the other things I saw is that, uh, especially this go around, I have been hesitant on multifamily uh, in downtown Minneapolis and also in St. Paul for a while. And, and now there's good reason. There's been a lot of chatter uh, about putting in rent control. And now St. Paul has one of the most regressive rent control policies in the country. And one of the things that I believe is going to happen is that you're going to have a lot of properties that are basically going to be run by slumlords. And so I think you're going to have uh, degradation of the apartment stock in those markets. And you're going to have areas that kind of fester with crime. And I'm extremely concerned with what St. Paul is doing. And I won't touch the market. 
I won't invest there uh, because if you're going to not be able to have any rent growth, you're not going to have any excess cash to, to put into those deals to make sure that they stay nice and safe for your tenants. And that's not something I'm willing to do. Uh, so in, that, in those markets, I would be very cautious, particularly about uh, multifamily, but that could spill into commercial properties down the road as well. Uh, a couple other takeaways that I had is that this is really a strong Midwest market. It's got fantastic growth. It has got good uh, job growth. It has very good in migration. Uh, it is. It has a very low unemployment rate. Um, but by the locals, this market is considered kind of slow and steady. And with all the coastal money that has been coming into the market, it makes me pause a little bit because you need to have capital that will buy the properties from you in the future. And my concern is that the locals are still thinking the market is slow, steady, sleepy. And that may have changed because these markets are dynamic. They're creating a lot of jobs. And so you do have investors from the coast that are coming in and pouring a lot of money into these markets for good reason. Uh, but it gives me pause because the returns are, are lowering and you still need to have that coastal capital at this point coming in to take you out if you decide to sell. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I highly recommend looking at Minneapolis and the greater St. Paul area uh, as investment opportunities in the future. Uh, and just know that when you run these numbers, a lot of the locals do find these markets to be conservative. Uh, but these markets are very dynamic and, and very international. So, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one.